Hello everybody. Welcome back to the Life As I Live It channel. I'm Steve, back with you again. I know it's been some time. Um, I posted a video briefly about two weeks ago and took it down. So it was a sale item and it sold rather quickly. So I didn't keep the video up. So I guess technically this is my first video of the new year. So here we are, February the 22nd. So I'm a little late getting a video out, but you know, it's one of those things. I'm actually battling COVID right now. I feel decent. I just don't have a lot of energy, but, uh, you know, not a whole lot of person can do about it. Just have to make the most of things. But anyways, I, some time ago, I showed you guys a little sneak peek of something that I had coming up on the channel. And I thought today would be a good as day as any to show it off to you. We'll do a walk around and Try to get a little video of us driving here and we'll put it all together and hope you guys enjoy. Stick around. So you guys may remember that, I don't know, a couple, three weeks ago, I posted that I had something pretty exciting coming to the channel. Now, you see the wife's Toyota here, that's not it. But let me turn this thing around here and we'll take a good look at this. I have got a new addition to the channel, a new driver, and I am beyond stoked about this thing. You are looking at a 1950 Dodge Coronet. It is the four-door sedan, four-passenger, or I'm sorry, six-passenger four-door sedan. This thing has the gyromatic uh, transmission. So back in the 1950, I think 49 and 50, they had either called a fluid drive or a gyromatic. Um, it's kind of like their idea of an automatic of the day. It's, uh, it's a really strange transmission. It took some getting used to for me. Now I had a 49 Coronet years ago, but not nearly in the shape this car's in. So to say the least, I'm beyond stoked to have this thing here at the house. Been driving it already, and I'm telling you, she is a blast. There's a limo in the background, and old George. Gonna be selling old George if anybody takes the notion they want a 74 Nova. Just kind of give you a quick walk around here. This car has the, it's powered by the Chrysler's, I think it's a 230 cubic inch inline six cylinder. The Coronet was the top trim level for that year. So back in 1950, if you were looking to buy a Dodge car, this was the most expensive car you could buy. It was the most loaded too. Ironically, this car does not come with a radio. It's got the delete plate and everything, but it does not have the radio. It's got these little things here to cover your locks and protect them. Now the mirrors, I'm not sure. It's possible they're added on and I'm, I'm sure this car has had a, a restoration at some point. Well, I know it has. Um, it, it's in too decent shape not to. And there's a few little minor things that says, okay, it still needs a little bit of work on it. But and for the most part, the paint's nice and shiny, and I've not done a thing to it. Oh, there goes our traffic down the road. Um, it has, uh, I believe these are Coker wide white walls in really good shape show you here we've got the back door handles this one here got a little chip right here in the paint so nothing major there matching mirror on this side but i'll get in here so you can see this gyromatic and the tires you can see are really good shapes got the baby moons on it i mean this car just screams 1950s no matter how how you look at it. we'll go ahead and open it up here now the driver's side door panel has probably the worst. It's uh, got some issues you can see. This here will eventually have to be recovered. The floor's got newer carpet in it. Got some throw mats. It's nice and solid though. The seats, as you can see, they've been fully recovered. Actually, they may be car covers. I, I've not dug deep enough into it. It's possible seat covers. Uh, the door handle over here, again, is going to have to be uh, recovered and worked on. 
But the dash is nice and clean with the exception of one little place right there. You can see it's had a little bit of a leak. So that's something I'll have to turn my attention to later on. But the gauges are nice and bright. It's got 82,000 707 miles on it, but now I was told that the engine and transmission, the drivetrain have been rebuilt, so uh, hopefully there. It's got a manual choke that's been added, and that switch down there actually goes to an electric fuel pump that was put underneath. We'll get to all that here in just a few minutes. Uh, over here's the heater controls. You can see that there, the defroster switch is on the right, and then the one that's out underneath the hood would be to your left here, but when it was rebuilt, all that was disconnected, so that's not available. There's your radio delete plate, the nice big Dodge logo. I actually have stuck a Bluetooth speaker in there behind it, so that way if I'm driving it, I've got a little sound. It's a clock, got an ashtray below that, glove box over there. Everything still works on that. We'll pan back around here. It's got an overhead light that does work, ironically. It just, I don't know why, but there's no switch on the driver's side, except a little one here, right here that you can see. But now it, it isn't working, so I've got a feeling that's something I'm gonna have to look at replacing, which isn't a huge, huge deal to me. It's not a, not a major issue. Back door panels, I believe, are original. They look like the right material that it would have been in it. Um, headliners, a little dark, but it's not in terrible shape for the age. Most of them are tore all to pieces. The rear package shelf's pretty good. I got some air freshener, my license plate's there in it. It's got clothes hangers and all that. But overall, I mean, the car is just really super nice to be a 73 year old car. Uh, I was have to tell myself that. If you look here in the back seat, there's all kinds of room. Even has, I'll pull in here and get everybody in so you can see, even has the ashtray here with the Dodge logo on it. Oh, well, it's my lucky day. Somebody left me, it looks like 20 cents in the ashtray there. It's got handles here so you can get in and out. And I mean, this car, the room back here is absolutely phenomenal. And if you see this little box down here in the floor, let me tell you something. If you have an older vehicle or really anything that has a funny smell to it, it would be in your best interest to get you one of these. Now, and I'm no way sponsored by anybody. I'm just a, my own person here, but I, this thing, when I bought it, the smell of mothballs would absolutely knock you down. So I knew that was something I was gonna have to take care of pretty fast. So I purchased that thing off eBay. There's the, the fuel tank. It's got a new tank on it. Tail lights, eh. I've seen better, I've seen worse, but there is uh, another set of tail lights in the trunk for it. So I've always got those available to swap out. There's that. Um, we're going to get under the hood here in a minute where you can really see the changes, but I want to show you all this. So when you open the passenger side door, if you look up, that lights are burning. This side has a door switch. Now, why the other side doesn't, I have no idea. But maybe that's one of the quirks of Dodge. I'm not sure. But anyway, I purchased that ozone generator off of eBay, and I think it was about $35, $40. I did two sessions of it, and it absolutely has taken that mothball smell away. The only thing you can smell now is just the air fresheners I've got in it, and it's made the drive a whole lot more pleasant. I love this big hood emblem here, this ornament. It's amazing on it. Got the Dodge lettering down here, and then right there in the center of the grill is a big crest. I think that right there is the show-stopping piece for this car and and dodge wasn't they weren't one to spare the pieces either i mean they you can see them plastered all over the car it's got the i don't know this must be some kind of add-on here i've not seen these before maybe it's it feels like metal but i think if something was added on probably when the car was repainted all the lights and all the gauges and stuff work uh temp gauge i'm not sure on I, it doesn't come up but it may just be something I'm doing wrong. 
Now, even though this car is 1950, check this out. Oh, there's the serial number on it. And looks like, let's see if we can read any of these dates. Uh, no. No, can't read the dates, but there's the Dodge maintenance record on it. Just kind of give you an idea there. But even though this is a 1950 model, it's fancy enough that it requires a hood pop inside the car. I know most older ones don't have that, so it's kind of a nifty feature. So, get a hold of it down here. Get my hood latch lifted up. And now, here's the power plant. You can see it's got a new aluminum radiator. Everything has been rewired. As you can see, the heater box and stuff that was here has been removed. I have all of it. It was just in rough shape, so it wasn't put on the car. There's the 230 Flathead 6. And I'm telling you, this thing runs like a sewing machine. It's been wired up, fuel lines going through everything. Now this little thing back here, if my camera will focus, is a fuel pump that was added on. So I'm gonna assume the factory fuel pump's either been removed or is not working, but whoever rewired this thing did a fantastic job. That stuff right there, I'll show you here, that is the controls for the automatic or the gyromatic transmission. It is uh, all controlled under that. This is a six volt positive ground system. It's got a newer battery in it. Starter solenoid there. And then over here is just some of the electrical stuff. Uh, generator works great on it. If you can see the generator, it's down here. So, it's got these humongous horns. I tell you, it's wild. So let's go in. I'll hop in the car here and let's give it a quick start. Y'all bear with me and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. So we'll put the key in the ignition and and even though it is their version of an automatic, there is, you still have to use a clutch and all that. So put it in that. Now, I had it running this morning, but I'm going to go ahead and choke it just to make sure. All right, let's see what she does. Keep an eye on these gauges. Hear the fuel pump kick in. And there she goes. Which it's, an, it's a warm day. It's like 80 degrees out here today, so... Pull the choke back out, let off the clutch. Make sure we're not going anywhere. This is the parking brake, so always make sure it's set. Let's see, check the... See the ammeter, we're charging, especially when I give it a little fuel. Oil pressure is really good. Hold on. Oh, let's see, let me get this thing around here. We can see it holding around 40 pounds. Fuel gauge is full, and yes, the fuel gauge does work. Speedometer works. And I'll show you here, we've got, it's got electric wipers. So, see those working. These panel lights here, so you can turn the inside lights off and on, but when the headlights are on, this is, I'll just turn on the parking lights. It may be hard to see in daylight. You can see the voltage gauge jump, but there's a light burning inside there, if you can see that turn it off and yeah, kind of see the difference. At night, they're bright. They're very bright, so you can really see all that. I'll turn the panel lights on so you can just kind of see. So let's do a quick walk around while it's running. I'll show you the engine here real quick. You can hear that motor just as smooth as it can be. carburetor on there with old bath filter and stuff on it. You see the parking lights are burning. At some point I may see about changing these out to LED, but I, I'm not decided for sure yet. Sounds good. Now, when we get around back here, this is what I want you to hear. This is the... Can you hear that? rumble to it. There's tail lights, license plate light, and that. So I thought that maybe I had a bit of an exhaust leak. Till one day I pulled in in my other vehicle. I just happened
happen to glance over underneath the car and take a look. That right there is why it sounds the way it sounds. It's got a nice big cherry bomb on it. So, so that's why the car has that nice rumble to it. Now, without driving it, it doesn't, it's not obnoxious in any way. But, uh, it's got the two-tone tan and green with tan interior, tan and brown. I mean, I absolutely love it. Oh, I want you to look at this here too. You see this opening here? It looks like a little thing. This is actually a fresh air intake. So in 1950, this was Dodge's version, I guess of what you would call air conditioning. So this lever right here, if you push that, that activates that. Now look up here, see that? So it opens it and lets all that fresh air back inside your car. And I've, re I've used it a few times and it really will blow you out of there. It's amazing how well it, it operates. Okay, so next thing, all you guys will join me back here. I'll have her all buttoned up and we're gonna take her for a drive. So I will see you guys soon. All right guys, I am with you again. I only have the one hand, so it's kind of hard to back this thing out and steer it all at the same time. So kind of have to just bear with me a little bit, but I want to tell you a little bit about this transmission. So you hear me running about, listen, did you hear that click? So you put this thing up in the upper range here. You can see where it's at. Then you let go of your clutch and start rolling, get up to about 10, 12 miles an hour and then let off the gas pedal. And then when you hear a click, that's that fluid drive that General Maddox switching into second gear. And then once you get up about 25, 30, something like that, then you shift it on down into third gear or high gear and it does the same thing there. So you can kind of see the way things go here. Little quick loop loop around here. Whoops, guess I better put a tire on the thing. I've got to go pick the kiddo up from soccer practice, but let everybody kind of see me taking it for a ride. You can see my speedometer is working. Things good on it. Charging. Fuel gauge is full. Oil pressure is good. Check out that view across that hood, guys. I'm telling you, there's nothing in the world quite like that view. There's nothing a modern car can give you that would even compare to this. All right. You can see I'd shifted it back up into second. Now I'll use the clutch, shift her down to third, and away we go. Now you see I'm up to about 35, 40. I'll let off, it shifts again, and on we go. So technically this is a four speed car. Now there's gonna be some wind noise because I got a window rolled down, but just kind of give you an idea of what riding along in a 1950 Dodge is like. This right here is my turn. Like I said, it was just doing a real quick loop. So you can see where we're going. And shift her back down, but away we go. Alright guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, you like this kind of content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends. I'd love to have as many of you on my channel as possible. It's a, sure is a blessing to me every time someone subscribes, but either way, I want you guys to enjoy. I hope you've had fun. We'll do more of these old car videos and ride-alongs and stuff, and you just stay tuned in the future. Thank you, guys.